Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 25 online game today We got the Oakland Raiders and the Minnesota Vikings and this is when I was in my phase of the Raiders were the best team in all of Madden with the Terrell Pryor McFadden combo. So I had another game with them. I was like, you know, why not? This game is decent. And today we'll do part two of the series where I was gonna um like predict the NFL seasons for everybody. Last time I did Whoa, this dude just got I don't even know he just got baited or just made a bad read. But either way, we're going to the crib and we're scoring off of this one. Getting touchdown on defense in the first minute of the game. That always feels good. That always makes you feel good for the rest of the game. But um, anyways, yesterday I did the um NFC predictions, so today we'll go along line and do the AFC predictions and we will start off with the West just like yesterday we start off with the NFC West today we will start off with the AFC West the NFC West was possibly the best division in the league the AFC West is possibly the worst division in the league I mean besides the Broncos obviously the Broncos are set up for a good like 12 and 4 maybe like 13 and 3 season once a Peyton Manning gets hot or something like that with that Wes Welker combo Demarius Thomas all of them that could be an easy 13 and 3 team especially with the division they're in then the Chiefs, a lot of people feel like the Chiefs could be a team that steps up. And the way I see the Chiefs stepping up is either their defense, like, somehow gets better. I, they've kind of improved it. There's not that injury prone anymore. You got Berry coming back. You got Holly. You got um the cornerbacks, Brandon Flowers, Sean Smith over there. So, I mean, they could be decent. But I think if Jamal Charles gets injured, they're absolutely screwed. Because Jamal Charles is a beast. And if he gets injured, they're definitely done. Even though it's the Andy Reid offense... I feel like that team rides on Jamal Charles, and if Jamal Charles has a B season, they could easily go like nine and seven or something like that. But if he gets injured, that team might just plummet to like six and ten or something like that. Because Alex Smith's only gonna win so much games. And um, anyways, so the Chargers, there's absolutely nothing looking good for the Chargers this season. And anything that you thought looked good got injured on that team. You saw a bunch of people get injured, like. Two of their top wide receivers got injured, so it's a mess for them in San Diego right now. And this is a bad read by me. I don't know why the hell I did it. But look at Jacoby Ford. I like the effort, even though it was a bad read. He just like flipped in the air for that one. But um, Chargers are probably gonna do something like six and ten or five and eleven. I mean, Philip Rivers just hasn't been the same. He hasn't had a great offensive line either. But I mean, he just been a mess. And look at that a little speed boost Cordell Patterson gets, and he's taking this one all the way. I don't know why Charles Woodson was number two, but um, I, this was the early release, so. I mean, you got to live with some of that stuff with the early release, but, um, yeah, the Chargers are, they're just not looking that great, you know, their defense is only okay, you don't really know much of their pass rushes besides Ingram, and, um, I don't know, just a mess, maybe next year for the Chargers, the Raiders, maybe next 10 years, this team is great at Madden, I like them at Madden, as we just lob it up for Darren McFadden, and watch this, <clears throat> crack this helmet right there, and we're going in the end zone, but, um, Raiders, they're, they're a mess. They don't even know who their starting quarterback is. The fact that Terrell Pryor almost became the starting quarterback tells you how, ba how bad the starting quarterback situation is. Because Pryor is not an NFL quarterback. He's a man quarterback, but not an NFL quarterback. They are probably going to be a candidate for the number one overall pick this year. Moving on to the NFC or the AFC South, which has another candidate for the number one overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> like, there's nothing like, like I said, like, same thing with, um, prior to Blaine Gabbert. I mean, Blaine Gabbert's only going to be so much good. I think he's already hit his peak, you know what I mean? Maybe a little bit higher for him, but he's nothing better than glorified backup quarterback starting on a bad team to me. And, um, defense is decent. You still got, um, Reese Jones Drew. I mean, he's still a beast as we drop a pick there on third down. And he actually goes for it on fourth down, kind of being disrespectful to our drop pick. And thankful we make him pay, right? Right? Yes, we do. Missed the pick somehow, but he tried to make a one-hand snag off of it, and that just wasn't going to happen, thankfully. And, um, anyways, moving on, the Titans. The Titans, they have a chance to be decent. Titans are kind of underrated. People kind of sleep on the Titans, and they're a team that can easily go 9-7 and seven on the season, but at the same time, you know, Jake Walker... Another guy that hasn't shown that much promise, you know. Tennessee, I don't know what they're doing with their quarterback situation with Locker, but it's a boomer bust year for Locker. If he doesn't get it done this year, he's probably getting the shaft because he has, I mean, the decent defense is still de decent there. They are Chris Johnson. If Chris Johnson shows up, they improve the offensive line. So, I mean, it's a boomer bust year for Locker. If he doesn't lead them to like at least a 9-7 and seven year or something like that, maybe 8-8, eight and eight, then they're going to have to like seriously consider doing something in the draft. The Colts... They won a lot of close games last year. Locke was rocking the comeback swag last year like no other, leading them to an 11 and 5 record. And they had an easy schedule. So, you know, there's no doubt in my mind, even though I think Andrew Locke was easily the best quarterback out of that um, trap last year, there's no doubt they're probably going to take a drop 9 and 5 or something, 9 and 7, I mean, something like that. Still reasonable to possibly make the playoffs, but I mean, they're, they have, now they have like the, um, they played a second, people who finished second in the division instead of last, so. 
Yeah, you know, I'm not sure the Colts are going to exactly go 11 and 5, but making the playoffs isn't out of reach, especially since the AFC is a little bit banged up this year. And the Texans, I think the Texans are go or they're probably going to go like 12 and 4 this year. You know, you got Schaub staying healthy, you got Arian Foster, that's still a beast team. The defense is still beast, JJ Watt, um Jonathan Joseph, all of them on that team. Brian Cushing is coming back. That's huge for them. So they that's an easy 12 and 4 team right there. Like I said, especially with the their division's not that great and then the AFC, you know, I think that's an easy 12-14. Look at this. I tried to go for like a 61-yard field goal with Seabass here, but I barely get any power into that. That would have made a two-possession game, but still we get the ball heading into halftime here. It's been a, been a pretty decent game for us. I feel like we had a pretty good game offensively. The um, Pryor McFadden thing is working out really good for us. Though um, we get phase to a third down and five, but look at Pryor just running out here. This is why you got to like Pryor, that 90 speed. But um, anyways... The AFC East might also be competing with the um, AFC West for worst division in the league. And, of course, the Jets are like the poster boys of that thing. They're, they're, I mean, Rex Ryan usually gets to milk some stuff out of that team, make them uh, like one win or two wins better than they are. That defense is usually like a little bit underrated because everybody makes fun of the offense. But this year, ah, oh God, that team is... Just, Easily four and twelve, three and thirteen. Like there's just not, there's just no two ways about it. Unless Mar Marty Morningwing's offense is like godly, then like he can make any quarterback look good in it. They're screwed. <laughs> They're absolutely screwed. And so are the Bills. Jeff Tool. Who the fuck is that starting week one for them? EJ Manuel. Who knows that EJ Manuel is gonna be a beast? But I mean. You're probably going to have that give that thing a year. They still have C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson, two really good running backs. Look at this guy going for fourth down and 16. I, I basically throwing in the towel. You don't get that one. And he didn't get it. So, basically, he threw in the towel. And you see me coming back with the read option, having a pretty good passing game. And I'm also having a pretty good running game. And look at this play. Spin moves, get off of me, finding the holes, getting my box picked up, and Pryor goes in there. Beautiful play there. But, yeah, the Bills are going to be like 4-12. and 12. It's just a mess. And then their defense is a little bit eh. They got Bird and Mario Williams, but that's about it. I mean, yeah. There's just, I don't know. I, I usually need a quarterback to win games through in the fourth quarter, and they don't really have that right now. Unless EJ Manuel just surprises us all. And then the Patriots, they're going to go like 11-5. and five. They're going to have an easy schedule as they usually do. And glorify like off of that, get like extra win or two because of that. They're going to go like 11-5 and five or something. Like that, even though they're probably like a 9-7, and 10-16. And, and plus they have Tom Brady. Tom Brady will get you like three wins a season. And the Dolphins, the offseason winners... I mean, because the AFC is kind of eh, it's kind of wide open, and especially the AFC East, they could probably get like two wins each off the Bills and Jets. They could they could go nine and seven or eight and eight. I mean, even though the offseason winners usually don't do that well, if Ryan Tannehill kind of steps up that second year. You never know. You never know what can happen down there. They kind of got the defense fixed up. Who knows? Injuries might deplete them. Because usually when you pay for a lot of people, the second line defense isn't that good. But um, you never know. And um, the last division, the AFC North. I think the Ravens are going to win the division. A lot of people think the Bengals will. I think the Bang um the Ravens are good enough to win the division. Even though they lost Anquan Bolden, I think Joe Flacco will just do enough to get that team to win. And the defense, you know, you can't sell the defense that short. They still got Terrell Suggs, Doomerville, Nada, and um, Ladarius Webb is coming back. So... They could probably go 9-7 and seven and win the division. The Bengals could probably go 9-7 and seven and get a wild card too. But, I mean, at the same time, you never know. The Bengals might drop. They might drop off. But at the same time, you know, their offense, they definitely stacked up on offense with um, Eifer and uh, Giovanni Bernard. So, that could, I mean, they might step it up. They already have a great defense, one of the best defenses. So, things are looking good for them. They'll probably get a wild card. I would say them and the Colts probably get the two wild cards. The, oh, that's like the same thing as last year, so I'm not that confident. Because usually, there's no two teams don't get the same stuff they get last year. You know, there's usually different teams alternating throughout the playoffs. So, you know, maybe the Bengals fall out. They might be my pick to fall out, but um, they're close. Maybe the Dolphins snag that second wild card from the Bengals because the Bengals might have a tough schedule this year. Who knows? The Steelers, they're probably gonna be on the cusp of eight and eight, seven and nine, or something like that. But this just not their year. They got a, they got another year stacking up. They might be able to stack up talent and like gear up for next year, but. This year, they probably got to lay low. And then the Browns, I mean, the Browns aren't as bad as you might think they are, even though they got like, the Brandon Whedon show going on. I think, oh, by the way, look at this play right here. I know he's been thrown to the running back all game, so I bait it real quick, and we get the pick right there at the goal line. Not that it really matters because the game was over, but it's still nice, and it still makes a nice potential top 10 play of the week, right? And, um, yeah, like I said, the Browns, they could go like 6-10 and 10 or something like that. They're a decent team, and 
that pretty much wraps it up for my predictions and that wraps it up for this game even though you see he um he offered to concede and then he canceled it i'm like all right there's only like a minute left not really a big deal i'll just milk the clock out here get a first down you saw prior got injured matt flynn came in it's not really that big of a deal you see the clock runs out we end up taking the win here so hope you guys liked the video leave your um ideas in the comments criticize me if you want like last video everybody was on me everybody was on me last video so this video i expect no difference so um, leave a like in the video if you liked it, subscribe for more, and I will catch you guys next time.